Today, on a special edition of Total OS Today Podcasts, we have the PCA team. We have Spatry's Cup of Linen, Twinkle, Ping Pong Soup, Infinitely Galactic, and our host, Toaster Today. Jeez, the kid buys a new Blackberry Pie microphone and thinks he's Jay Leno or something. Hi, G, what's up? It's good to hear your voice. How are you? Ah, I'm good, thank you. I had no idea who that was. But anyway, yes, I'm here. Welcome aboard. Well, we have Spatry from Spatry's Hub Linux. We have, of course, Infinitely Galactic IG with a fantastic TV announcer voice. We have Pincast, and we also have Twill this week in Linux. How are you, sir? I am excellent. Thank you for asking. It's good to have you back. So, so this is something new. We are debuting the brand new PC-18, or we, we were kind of joking in pre-chat, the PC uh, indecisive team for all of you dual booters who can't decide what to boot in. But officially, it is the PC-18. And for tonight's topic, we will discuss Linux versus Windows, which is better, which is worse, the eternal battle between the two operating systems. Ha ha. So let me start off with the discussion, if I may. A few months ago, I was looking at one of the videos on YouTube, and one of the popular female show hosts did a discussion on, you know, Windows versus Linux. And she talked about four major talk points that apparently, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, but she said well, what she was was trying to say basically is that Linux is better and Windows sucks. But these were the top talking points. Number one, it's expensive. Number two, resource hog. And we're talking about Windows, of course. Number three, it's unstable. And number four, validation checks. Now, let me try to strike these down real quick, and then I'll let my fine friends chime in. Number one, Windows is expensive. Well, I bought a desktop last year, a name brand, a Lenovo desktop dual core, and I think I paid like $369 pre-installed with Windows 7. It runs fine. That doesn't seem too expensive to me. The second point, Windows 7 is a resource hog. Well, let me see. What kind of system requirements does KDE take? Pardis. Ultimate Edition, Unity with 3D. Don't they kind of recommend a gigabyte of RAM, kind of like Windows 7? The third point, well, Windows 7 is unstable. Apparently, she has never messed with Kden Live or ATI drivers. And the last thing, validation checks. Now, I personally don't have problems with validation checks, as long as it doesn't give me a blue screen of death, which I have yet to see a blue screen of death in Windows 7. So I was looking at these talking points, and then in my mind, I'm jokingly, jokingly, saying, oh, sorry, sorry, my bad, expensive resource hog, unstable validation checks. She was talking about herself. Hey, now on that note, my friends can chime in. Spatry. Well, um, I will say this. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is the validation checks because obviously that's a resource that's running in the background and it's a measure to basically treat uh, paying customers like thieves. Now, uh, also, I have encountered uh, blue screens of death. I'm dual booting. I'm running Windows 7 right now. But the thing is, uh, in my uh, Windows 7 install, I have that completely stripped down. I mean, I have denied it Internet access, so I don't have to worry about bugs coming in. And pretty much I have... Uh, uh, all the redundant services turned off, mostly because I'm playing a few games that I just can't get working under Wine. And if it were not for, uh, you know, if I if I could get Wine running everything that I have in Windows, I would actually not even be dual booting at all. Um, you know, uh, so Windows is a necessary evil for those few applications, but over time I have been looking for alternatives, uh, you know, so that I can, you know, eventually divorce myself uh, from Windows. But the thing is, you know, I did pay a lot of money for that software, and uh, I still want to get that good bang for my buck and get several years of use out of those programs that I purchased. So, you know, unfortunately, yeah, Windows 7 is still a necessary evil, but hopefully not for long on my end. IG, what say you? Yeah, I mean, for me, Windows, uh, you know, there are some professional level applications which you just can't get running uh, under Wine, uh, under Linux. So you are kind of stuck with Windows in that regard. And as far as system resources go, uh, it, it all depends on how, mu on how much uh, on how much system resources you have to kick around. Because one thing that I have noticed is that, like, I mean, if I was to look at my system monitor 
together on Ubuntu right now, I'd be using probably about 700 meg of RAM. If I was doing the exact same tasks in Windows, I mean, I do have 8 gig of RAM, so I've got plenty to kick around. But if I, if I did the exact same thing in Windows, I'd probably be using 1.4, 1.5, maybe upwards to about 2 gigs of RAM just to do the same thing. However, if you were to drop that down to 2 gig of RAM or even a gig of RAM, then I think you'd be able to take a bit more of an accurate look about uh, system resources. So I think, uh, at least in my experience, if Windows has the resources there, it's going to use them up. Uh, but if uh, but Linux is going to perform about the same, whether you have, uh, you know, it's going to use the same uh, memory footprint and resources if you have a, a beast of a machine or just, you know, a very light uh, light on. So, I mean, yeah, the system resources is, is a bit subjective depending on, uh, depending on what system you're running. As far as validation checks are concerned, yes, it, unfortunately, Microsoft kind of created themselves a bit of a problem. You notice how um, Apple's OS 10 doesn't doesn't bother doing that simply because it's, the whole system is so locked down anyway. So their software is is all funneled through a software center now. Um, and as far as the operating system itself, I don't think they even have any sort of validation checks uh, for for the operating system itself. So I think Microsoft kind of created themselves into a bit of like they created themselves a problem uh, when when they became so so huge and corporate and they tried to you know squeeze every drop of money that they could out of their system. And you know for better or for worse because their system is you know the industry standard or at least it was and um so you know there's there's not a whole lot you can do about the whole validation check side of things without without looking shady and once you look shady to microsoft then you are shady so you know it's 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 really just one thing that you have to do just to bow to what the uh, what the corporate powers that be decide fair enough uh pincas what can you say about this well um i can't say right now i'm on open box i'm at the moment with everything running i'm at 397 uh megabytes of ram and no swap uh use so um it depends on the environment you're running kde is about as heavy as it gets because uh, it's just half the features and it, it depends on what you run and if you have a uh, strong hardware you can run a heavy uh, environment if you have weak hardware you're going to have to go lighter weight and um you have that option of length you can have this in that environment um 300 bucks for a system that is i mean that's a, a lot to drop i mean especially i think that that comes uh that's part of the cost of the uh, machine when you buy it and so you're kind of just adding three dollars to the price that's a lot to add and then you don't get the uh, full features yet. You have to upgrade, you know, to ultimate, to unlock stuff. Um, uh, I think, uh, trying to remember what it was, uh, I think there was like a business edition of Windows 7 and Ultimate Edition, and uh, someone told me the only difference was a language pack or something, but the price difference was huge. Uh, I'm trying to remember it, but yeah, all these different versions with features locked down is just ridiculous. They're just price gouging you and emptying your wallet, and that's not really uh, great. I mean, 300 bucks and all you get the system. Uh, how much can you get from Red Hat for 300 bucks? You can get, uh, you can get quite a lot. I mean, a subscription is only like, uh, I think, a hundred yeah. bucks. You can get academic and stuff. Well, I mean, I, I did look online just shopping for, you know, computer systems pre-installed with Ubuntu. And I really, at least at the one website I went to, I did not really see that much of a difference in terms of price. Now, to see, you that's, and I, that's what, that's yeah. what, that's what I've seen. Um, you know, yeah. like systems that run Ubuntu by default, they seem about on par with what you pay for a Windows yes. machine. And I think, yes. I'm not sure. And Twill, you might uh, have some more knowledge in this area, but I think yeah. with the, the amount of money that the companies, the hardware companies actually spend to get Windows pre-installed is not that much because it's like OEM you know, volume licensing as it were. It's just the hardware manufacturer gets power to dish out Windows as much as it likes because it's a corporate company they're going to be, they're paying Microsoft a, a certain subscription fee to hand out these licenses, these OEM licenses and uh, so it doesn't affect you too much as an end user. If you are buying of course an upgrade or a, you know, a retail copy of Windows, then obviously Windows is going to get a full, you know, unequivocal cut of, of that three hundred dollars. But otherwise, I don't actually think that you're you're paying too much for Windows if you buy a brand new machine, because usually the hardware company is uh, is paying Windows uh, for you know for pre-installing their system. I'm not yeah. sure, but Twill, you might have some input on that. Yeah, yeah actually, the, the part of that I've been experienced with is uh, specifically with companies like Dell, with uh, HP, others like that. You're paying for the hardware with an OS on it. Uh, the best option that they seem to have in terms of making good revenue is offering one that has windows on it because it, of the uh, amount of bundled stuff they can put along with it they can bundle antivirus software that they get paid to put on there they can bundle office suites they get paid to put a, a starter edition of it on there because every little piece of software they put on there that niggles away at you and makes you kind of uh, angry that it's there uh, that's something that someone potentially could bu- could pay for so another software company will give them a small fee to put it on there okay, so when, when you get yeah. when you get your new computer that has trend micro or mcafee mm-hmm. or microsoft office pre-installed on it but a very limited edition whatever company has sold you that computer gets a little fee so you're actually getting that microsoft tax on top of it ah 
Okay. Yes, Spatry, you have something to say? Yes. Um, you know, if you if you think about all the different versions of Windows that are out there, okay, just picture, if you will, this is like a Swiss Army knife, and you get the number of blades, you know, that you paid for. Whereas when you have a Linux operating system, you get all of the tools, and the only limit is your imagination. You get all of the tools, but not necessarily all of the tools are necessarily good or stable versus horse stable. Uh, you know, a lot of something or everything of something is not necessarily all good. Now, when I see comments that Windows is unstable versus Linux, well, in my experience, it seems to be the opposite. Now, I'm not including viruses, spyware, and you didn't install a virus shield and don't maintain it. The one horse stable thing about Windows is you need a virus shield. I mean, that's all. I mean, you really can't really escape from that, and it has to be maintained. You don't need that in Linux, at least not yet. This may change in the future, and that's why I like Linux. But, I mean, in terms of what I paid for my desktop and what it does, you know, I mean, look, a new version of Windows comes out, what, every three to five years. So as far as upgrading, that's not an issue to me because if a new version comes out in three to five years, I'm probably, I probably should buy a new computer and sell the one I have. In terms of being a resource hog, yeah, I would probably say Windows 7 uses more. I just don't know if I would necessarily call it a hog, but as IG says, it will depend what you are running. Validation checks, again, don't really bother me that much. I realize that can be a nuisance, but, you know, I, I don't know. Look, I don't work for, you know, Microsoft, and no one's paid me, but I've had lately, really since Windows 7 beta, I've had good luck with Windows 7, and, and and I guess I am the only person here that has not seen a Windows 7 blue screen of that. I just haven't seen it. Uh, I have yet to have a virus affect my system. My virus shield usually catches it, quarantines it, and I choose whether, you know, to delete it or keep I usually just erase it. But look, maybe maybe it's because I know what I'm doing and, and I take the extra steps to keep my system stable. Uh, I don't know. I think but, that is actually a large part of it. Uh, getting yeah, back to yeah. between that and between the resource utilization, a yeah. large part of it comes down to the end user. Because if you hand an end user a Windows machine and a Linux machine, depending on their level of technical expertise, you will get someone that either uses 2 to 4 gigs of RAM merely on making the operating system look pretty, or you'll get somebody that ultra optimizes everything and is only using 12 megs of RAM to run open box, and that's all you get. Or somebody who's running purely the terminal. Uh, it really depends on who it is that's running it as to how bloated it's really going to be. Because you can take Windows 7 and turn off all the pretty effects. You can turn off yes. all of the arrow stuff and the, yes. the the pretty colorful interface and make it Absolutely. look like classic Windows that right. runs on really low amounts of RAM. Right. Uh, we, we've actually got a bunch of machines at work that are running it on one gig of RAM and doing okay. I'm not going to say that they're really, really amazing machines in, in that aspect, but they are surviving. They're, they're useful for production. Uh, that said, in the same instance, you can take a, a Linux machine and put KDE on it and put some really heavy apps on top of it and make it run in two or four gigs of RAM and eat every bit of that. But uh, at the same time, like like they were saying earlier, you do have that option. If you are technically uh, knowledgeable, if you are willing yes. to spend the time doing it, you can trim it down. You can put down whatever you want to put on it. It's all yes. in, how, again, how technical your end user is. And I think one other point is that, uh, like, you know, as you were saying, Twill, if you were to give a new user, uh, like one, uh, a new computer that runs Linux and then give another new user a new computer that runs Windows, come back in six months' time and see if they're still happy with how fast their computer is doing, I can guarantee you that the Linux machine machine will still be doing, you know, maybe a little bit slower, but mostly on par with what it was when you first bought it, whereas the new user who's using Windows will become frustrated with how slow their machine's getting because they, because again, it's just a lack of knowledge about how to maintain Windows, how to keep it running happily and smoothly and keep it, you know, maintained. Well, and in a lot of cases, those uh, those seemingly small antivirus or anti-spyware or internet security suites you put on top of them, they seem small and insignificant at the beginning and they can become resource hogs themselves. Yes, absolutely. So Time. Absolutely. Now, I, I will say, over time, Windows 7 is a little bit better than, than XP was in terms of after so many months you have to reinstall, because that's really not the case with 7 if you do take care of it. Yes. But uh, the, I have actually, my, my opinion on it has changed a little bit recently. Having users that use it every single day and after just a couple of weeks, c had them coming back saying, you know, this is running so much slower, this is doing this and that and the other, and it's just because of things Windows is doing in the background, like trying to sync documents or trying to uh, update itself, trying to, it, all sorts of things that it's not really letting you know that it's doing. And 
Uh, yeah, but that can be a hassle in of itself, too, because, right. I mean, you've got to defragment your hard drives. You have to keep your registry, registry clean, cleaned, especially if you, if, if you like testing different programs and that sort of thing. You uninstall something. There are traces that are still left in the registry and that sort of thing. And these are things that you don't have in Linux. Now, on the other hand, though, I am running Windows 7. I have a classic shell running on it. And a pro tip for all of you uh, out there who are running high-end games in uh, Windows 7 or uh, Vista or that sort of thing. There's this really cool program. It's freeware, and it's called uh, it's called Game Booster. It allows you to defragment your game drives. It allows you to clean your memory and that sort of thing, so you can get that extra bit of boost and that sort of thing. But... Um, yeah, these kind of but these kind of maintenance procedures you don't have to do in Linux, and unfortunately, yes, you have to do that in Windows. And a lot of people, your lay people that are out there, don't even know about this. They don't know how to defragment their hard drives. They don't know how to clean their registries and that sort of thing. But there are a number of tools out there that are easily obtainable. But if everybody um, knew how to defragment their hard drive and maintain their computer, then uh, half of the computer technicians would be out of a job overnight because literally <laughs> exactly. people people charge yes. eighty, ninety bucks be. just yeah. to do those. Those, okay. those maintenance tasks. Right. Jeez, I need right. to get on on this. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I think Best Buy probably would have gone out of business a while back if, if that were the case. I need to get in on this action. Yeah. <laughs> go, go, Pingy, go. <laughs> okay, um, for defragmentation, I think Windows 7 automatically does it from time to time, but if something's running, it's not going to, mm-hmm. the file's being touched, it's not going to be um, defragmented. I think it's the professional editions, the business editions that automatically do it. Yeah, I don't uh, think the home edition does that. Uh, okay. I don't remember. I think I have premium or ultimate ultimate in my uh, desktop. Honestly, I, I can't remember, but yeah. Windows really needs to do itself a favor and just consolidate down to one system because it's, it, uh, it's, it's ridiculous having all the different volumes and uh, well, conditions. Well, IG, I would have to agree because I think with Windows 8, they're going to release, I think, six, seven versions. That's just a bit much. Oh, I mean, I goodness. can understand. I yeah, it, you know, and even me here, I am trying to defend. I can't defend that. I mean, I mean you know, four. I and, think, that, and, and that's pushing it. And but, that, yeah. that brings us back to the Swiss Army knife. And while you uh, had stated earlier that there are a lot of these tools that are not so good. You're you're forgetting that in Linux we've got three or four tools that do the same task. So if one tool doesn't do the job for you, you can easily uninstall it and put it in a different one that you like better. So you know uh, at least with Linux you have all those options available to you, and most of them are free of charge. Pincast, have you had a blue screen of death using Windows Seven? Once. Just once. Uh, just okay. Once. Yeah, I remember. Um, right around. I think it was might have been around. Steve Jobs' death or something. I was trying to see something on uh, Apple's website, and it required me to install QuickTime, and when I tried to run it, I got a blue screen. So this would have been, what, last year? Okay. Yeah. Horse okay. stable. <laughs> uh, yes, I agree. All BS. <laughs> Shut up, Spatry. Here we go. Don't start. I'm still recovering from Don't last get night. Spatry started. Yeah, last night was a hoot. For those of you who didn't catch that show, you got to hear that one. <laughs> yes, catch the Sunday Night News and Nonsense Report me and Spatry did. By the way, it's on Sunday nights any of you guys are welcome to join but i warn you spatry will be <laughs> <laughs> yeah he will show no mercy guys but showing his real teeth yeah yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> showing yeah, it's yeah. real t- you got it uh what were we talking about <laughs> <laughs> actually uh, sorry, sorry to go uh, sorry to jump back a little bit. It looks like the uh, Windows 8 editions might have been revamped in the last week or so. Uh, oh. It was like six or eight editions before, but it's, they say they're down to three editions now. Thank you. Ah, so. no, okay. I, I, wow. I'll buy into that. There you go. Maybe See Microsoft find out what is they're actually called. listening to its customers. Hey, imagine uh, that. It says Windows 8, Windows 8 Pro, and Windows 8 RT, which was previously Windows on ARM. So no, you've, I, got a, you've got essentially I, a tablet edition or a phone edition kind of thing, Home and Pro. No, I which don't actually brings us to a yeah. very important point, and that is that... Uh, you know, right now we're comparing Linux to Windows 7, but I think when Windows 8 comes around, especially from the traditional user's point of view, uh, there's going to be some very interesting comparisons as to yes. what everyday users are going to want to use. I think the, the, the next generation of, of people coming up who have, you know, grown up on smartphones and that kind of thing, they're not going to have an issue with it. But for yes. your, you know, mum and pop kind of thing, it's it's going to be, I think, an in- a very interesting transition for anybody who wants to buy a new computer. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's going to be comparisons 
galore when it comes to uh, the desktop, you know, desktop operating system. And uh, and I've said it before, but I really yeah. think um, I really think you know Ubuntu 12.04 is um, is is shaping up to be a very you know viable desktop alternative. Yes, it's you know it's different and it's modern, but it's it's a good kind of modern. It's 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 efficient and it suits yes. what the form factor is, as opposed to big clumsy tiles that kind of look a bit I don't know uh, they look a bit 80s in nature really uh, with you know just big flat colorful you know and I mean sure it's just the metro interface but still uh, paradigm changes are so difficult for a consumer market to, to latch onto so I mean I think it's going to be interesting this year and next year when when we all start comparing you know the various Linux distributions to Windows 8 because that's going to be yeah. like it or lump it the the, the next yes. industry standard well and that, that's actually the big thing the, the word you mentioned there the paradigm shift uh, the entire desktop interface has changed in the last year and Microsoft is, is making their way in that direction as well moving away from the traditional you have a bar at the bottom you've got your start menu and you've got some icons on the desktop to more of a tablet interface you know a full screen here are uh, you know apps that you can select here are live widgets that you can can alter kind of like Android has like Windows 8 will have Windows Phone uh, actually I think I, iOS and um, OS 10 Lion have some similar things with their launch pad I don't know uh, the things are moving more in the direction of a tablet type interface and I think it's it's the end user that's eventually going to have to take their time and uh, sort of relearn how to use the desktop yeah I, was, I wanted to ask Pinkass, how often do you use Windows 7? 50-50, or is this something completely different? At the moment, um, because uh, I've had some changes with my living arrangement because uh, stuff has come up, so at the moment my desktop's not in a place where it can get a decent internet connection, so I haven't been able to get on it at all. I've just been on my laptop, but um, when I was on it, I would get on it to game or on Windows 7 to game or, or uh, whatever if it required Windows. It didn't require Windows, I would be on Linux doing it. Okay, it appears that, from what I understand, you know, perhaps Windows 7 still has an edge for gaming. Would, would, would that be a fair statement? I'd uh, say so. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, yes. Oh, okay. For me, uh, I mentioned this before, I don't play games on any PC. For me, it's my trusted uh, Xbox 360. Uh, I'm a big Halo fan. And by the way, guys, I can't wait for Halo 4 to come out. I think it's going to be a hoot. Now, a couple things I want to end this topic, and maybe we can go into talk a little about you know Windows 8 if you want to. I think perhaps when a pre-installed Linux computer system is shipped out, perhaps there should be a big disclaimer, red label that says, install software at your own risk. Not the pre-installed software, but the other software, you know, from the Synaptic Package Manager and the Software Center, because it's not all good. A lot of it's good, but not, but then a lot of it is not good. So maybe a disclaimer, okay? Install software at your own risk. We only guarantee the pre-installed tested software. On the Windows side, there should be probably even bigger, you know, red sheets saying you must install a good <laughs> antivirus, you must maintain it, and avoid all porn sites. <laughs> so so uh, maybe, you know what, to be diplomatic, they either are both good, or maybe they can both suck. So I there you go. If you put the porn disclaimer, you might have a lot of people uh, looking for that Ubuntu ISO. Uh, okay. well, and actually, to, to sort of hit both of those, that one. <laughs> to, to sort to hit both of those, the uh, the software center they actually have uh, people on staff at Canonical or people on staff at least in the Ubuntu community that are uh, masters of the universe that are supposed to be keeping track of those pieces of software, making sure that bug reports get taken care of, making sure that the software is stable, is usable. Uh, the problem a lot of people do face is uh, whether the the hardware they're using is 100% compatible, and that's still always going to be up in the air. Uh, on the Windows side of things, I've having done several Windows 7 installs in the last couple of months, it really pops up and annoys you if you don't immediately put an antivirus software on it, if you don't yes. put uh, Windows updates turned on, if you don't turn your firewall yes. on, it annoys the crap out of you. Uh, I will say the one thing that I really hate about it is that user access control, but that is quick and easy to disable, though that it oh, really yeah, shouldn't yeah. be. Uh, yeah, but yeah. but like, like you were saying, they, they need to do that. They actually have been doing it since Windows 7, or Windows Vista, I think. I mean, just, yeah. just yeah. annoy yes. the user, but it's more yes. an annoyance than a usable yes. feature for most people. Right. right. Do not disable the user access access control because then pretty much you're just giving your system over to the viruses and malware and everything that'll creep in. Um, the best bet is to do this. 
you uh, create, you know, you have your administrator account, then create a standard user account and use that. And then when you need to install something or whatnot, log in to your administrator account and install everything. That way, it's the best way to protect your system, really. Uh, well, Whatever uh, happened to Windows yeah. just applying a, a applying a Linux strategy, just sudo everything, which I guess user account control is similar to that, but it's much more obnoxious. Uh, mm-hmm. I think sudo would uh, cause more blue screens of death than anything. <laughs> what I've done is if I need to install something and uh, right-click run as administrator didn't work, what I've sometimes done is open up an admin command prompt on the normal account and I'd run the file as administrator in the command prompt. Very sound idea. <laughs> did, did somebody hear a motorcycle? I did. Yeah, I got a motorcycle in the background here. Sorry for that. For not okay. my, I'm muting my mic there. It sounded like you just scared away one of you know one of your Windows friends, uh, Spatry. You know. <laughs> Actually, I'm installing Linux on uh, on uh, one of my neighbor's computers right now as we're speaking. So you still? Oh yeah, you're installing Ping ca- or Ping Guy, right? Uh, Ping Guy on a netbook. Ah. Yeah, okay. I just upgraded the kernel and now I'm installing all the updates. All right, let me, uh, if I may, I have one final comment on this, and then of course you guys can chime in. Twill mentioned about how the uh, the developers you want to take great care in testing stuff. I wish I could agree with you, but last month, probably all of you know about my uh, recent boxing match with ATI drivers, and it said tested. <laughs> that, that, I'm sorry, I cannot trust it, at least not in the near future. So for now, temporarily, spatch your show. <laughs> but, uh, but, but for, <laughs> for now... <laughs> and Spatry says, well, you didn't read the fine print at the bottom. Yeah, and the fine print says, believe you, right. But uh, <laughs> that left a bad taste in my mouth. And I'm not going to blame anybody specifically. That being said, <clears throat> I think the quality gap from the core, within the core system between Linux, well, some Linux, such as, you know, Zorn and Ubuntu 12, 1204 and Windows 7, I think the quality gap is getting narrow as far as the core system and what can be trusted. But man, those that I had to reinstall Ubuntu twice. Thank God Windows 7 to the rescue, and that just left a bad taste in my mouth. Now I'm sure that's not the entire uh, pieces of software out there, but that you know, look, folks, if you're a buying a new computer with pre-installed Ubuntu Linux, all I can tell you is from my experience, if it's already pre-installed, chances are it's been tested. At least I would hope so. Same I'd thing with Windows so too. Yeah, and and this goes for Windows too, by the way. But you install software in Linux, you install software at your own risk because I don't really know if it's been tested. With Windows, you install software at your own risk because the possible, vi- uh, you know, yeah, well, possible viruses and spyware. But here's the thing. I'd, I'd rather choose Windows. Here's why. You can install an antivirus shield for some protection. There's no such thing as an anti-bug shield. Once you have it, it's there. So, you know. But then in, it's in, just your your responsibility then is uh, just to, you know, track down whatever, yes. uh, whatever version that is and see if you can upgrade. It. But of course, if you're an average Joe, you're not really going to think of doing that, are you? Right. I'm, I'm more for the consumer mom and pop. You know, for them, as long as they have a good virus shield, you know, they can scan the scan their computer, delete it, reboot, and hopefully it's done. And I say hopefully, not always. With a bug, you know, you have to spend. You know, when, when I had the ATI driver issue, you know, I've told myself if it takes me more than 59 minutes to find out what a problem is, I refuse to do it. And it's even less for Windows. I'll just reinstall the whole freaking system. You know, my my time is valuable, you know, because, you know, family and the son and maybe Twill might appreciate this, you know, with his mm-hmm. family and, you know, and kids. But that being said, in both operating systems, if it takes me more than 59 minutes to, say, clean out a virus, I'm done. I'm just reinstalling it. With mm-hmm. Linux, if it's if it's a bug, you know what? Look, perhaps I may, you know, PM Spatry or Twill and, you know, and all my good friends here for a solution. I might do that. But my patience has gotten thinner with both operating systems. Systems. And that's as probably as diplomatic an answer I can give. Both operating systems can be superb, and both can be horse table depending <laughs> on the circumstances. So, I think one other tip that might be worth mentioning here as well, with um, when it comes to installing uh, applications on Ubuntu, uh, specifically in Ubuntu derivatives, uh, is that you were talking about uh, the you know software being tested by uh, by Canonical and things like that. The the repositories there, when you go into software sources under the Ubuntu Software Center, they have uh, the check boxes there. So you've got canonical supported free and open source software, which is the main repository. Then you have community maintained. So you can, I mean, if you're that uh, paranoid about uh, about installing software that 
might not potentially work the way it's supposed to. You can uncheck the community maintained and then you'll just be left with uh, a much more limited, but it's still going to be endorsed and supported and tested by Canonical themselves to make sure that it works. And this usually covers most of the big applications. That's fair, but I still stick with my uh, solution. In both in both operating systems, install software at, at your own risk. That yeah, makes sense. Surf foreign at your own risk. <laughs> well, that too, but... Uh, I mean, wasn't there a report of a virus in Linux? Wasn't it just last month or month before that was somewhat serious? Did you guys? I'm sure, that wasn't that? Mac OS X. <laughs> uh, I don't use Mac, don't you, IG? How do you like Mac? <laughs> oh yeah, it's uh, it's got its own points. They've definitely borrowed. Uh, they've definitely borrowed concepts from Linux and vice versa. So yeah, okay. it's it's it, it's very nice. It's very it's a very comfortable it's a very comfortable place for the uh, end user because there's only one way to do things, and that's the Apple way. Once they've figured that out, then they're they're at home. <laughs> safely just doing their thing right well who knows maybe in a couple years we'll, we will have the mac 18 or not but it's just a thought uh, there's plenty of them already i assure you <laughs> okay uh well as far as this topic goes any closing comments i i have one uh in terms of the drivers and i know this is something that really had you um upset uh total yes. os today you know um if you're you know if your um display is working well i really don't recommend uh installing the ati drivers i've you know regardless of which distribution i was running I never really liked them. I thought the stock XORG drivers worked just fine. They do very well for running uh, 3D games and programs in Linux. So, I mean, you know, uh, you know, I, I kind of wish ATI would release better drivers. Uh, I have in, now instead of using the Update Manager to install those drivers, I was actually downloading them from the AMD ATI website and installing them that way. I've had some okay results, but the thing is, sometimes I'd run into screen tearing and that sort of thing and even clicking the setting to reduce tearing and stuff didn't always work and you know there was always one little niggle that just rubbed me the wrong way so uh you know i tend to you know so i avoid them and even um and even since i switched to arch the arch wiki also recommends against using proprietary drivers and uh so you know uh, i found that you know um just you know just using the stock drivers tend to be a lot better for me personal yeah that's been largely my experience yeah. uh, as well yeah the um Ever since about 2010, the open source drivers uh, for for ATI cards have been, you know, more than more than capable, uh, in my opinion. In most cases, I definitely agree. I did find recently I had to install the the proprietary ones uh, for a 3D game. It was uh, Amnesia, and it has some some decent 3D requirements, and it just would not run at all on the the open source driver. It didn't even tell me why. But as soon as I put the ATI proprietary one on, it worked just fine, and haven't had any problems since. I had one little issue in that I'm using dual monitors and it didn't recognize displays immediately. I think that's actually a bug that's fixed in 1204, though. I did notice uh, when I looked online, you know, just to pretend shop for Ubuntu-based, you know, pre-installed computer systems, Mm -hmm. if I recall, not a single one had ATI cards. They were like NVIDIA or something else, so maybe... Either Intel or NVIDIA, usually every time. Oh, okay. Thank you. So I wasn't just imagining things. And just my luck, I had to buy a machine with the ATI. But then I'm like, well, wait a minute. That's not my machine's fault. You know, but yes, I would agree. Don't, don't just stick with the, uh, what the, uh, what's it called? Zorg drivers and mm-hmm. then go from there. But that seems to be working. I mean, in my system. And honestly, even, even if I did install the ATI and there was no bugs, how much better could it be? I mean, I really don't, well, I mean, I don't know because I couldn't really test it, but how much better would it be? So I don't know. At the know. end of the day, you've got to think of, you know, what, what do the what do the companies have to gain by yes. by spending their re- time and resources on uh, on developing proprietary drivers for Linux? We are such a small market share, and unless they have a vested interest because a company that pays them money depends on those drivers, they're not really going to do too much work on it. Right. Okay. Pincast, you have any closing comments on this topic? Um. Yeah. I'm. I. I'm an ATI user. Uh, both my machines have uh, ATI cards. I have. Uh oh. Uh, I know. I did have. I have had bad experiences with a proprietary driver. For me, open source work just fine. And uh, I. I started Linux uh, using it right around 2010 when the drivers took off. So. Okay. I. I have. I have no idea about the uh, woes before then. I never had to put up with them. ATI has been working fine, uh, mostly for me. I. I've had a uh, maybe an issue or two here or there, but it's been fine for the most part. I think just the very fact that you can install a Linux system uh, on, you know, on really any machine and you can usually get native resolution and usually you get 3D acceleration. Uh, compared to compared to installing 
Windows 7 or Windows Vista or Windows XP on, on any kind of machine, you usually have to go out and grab uh, the driver for your for your computer. So I think in that respect, you know, the hardware drivers, they come pre-installed, but, you know, by the open source community, they get packaged up. I reckon they do a, they do an amazing job um, to have that out of the box, you know, functionality. In most cases, I'm not going to say blanket statement uh, compared to the amount of fussing around you have to do with, uh, with Windows machines. All right, let me end this, if I may, with a gripe about Microsoft, even though I've been trying to defend them. But when I, my, uh, the last multimedia laptop I bought, it's, and I still have it. It's, I mean, like, it's outdated. It's a Pentium, what is it? Pentium Centrino, Pentium N with Ubuntu 1204 dual booting with Windows. But I recall I bought it because I think the time it was half off, you know, and it has the little remote control on the side and the dock with the speakers and the, the big 17 inch, and it was a good price. And I was able to upgrade for free. Uh, by going to the website to get a free Vista upgrade disk. Now, it had Windows XP pre-installed, so I thought, well, you know, it's nice of them. I'll try, you know, Vista for free because there was a sticker that said Vista capable or something like that. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I installed Vista. After some research, I'm thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. This only had 512 megabytes of RAM to run Vista. Oh, it ran it all right. It ran it, it ran it like into the ground. It was so slow. And another thing, I remember seeing demos of all these cool, you know, graphics and error effects. How come mine doesn't do that? Oh, mine had the wrong graphics card. It had enough RAM, a dedicated video card, 128 megabytes. It had enough juice, but the wrong, uh, but the wrong graphics graphics card or the wrong chipset. So I felt misled. So Microsoft, I think you owe me a laptop. So on that note, does anybody else have anything else to say? Okay, why don't we do this? Let's leave the Windows 8 for when, for when it gets released or maybe closer to the end of that. Why don't we end this with one of the most frequently asked questions, how to install Linux as a dual boot battery about, was it last month or two weeks ago, we were trying to answer a question for someone who sent me an email on how to install uh, uh, Zorn on a 500 gigabyte hard drive. And we said, boy, that's a waste of time. Try a flash drive. You remember mm-hmm. that? Yes. Okay, well, he, all right, cool. He sent me an email and he says it's not working. He tried it from the flash drive and from a DVD. And I think if I recall the email, he says, well, I, I go into my BIOS. I I choose to boot from the either the DVD or the or the flash drive and his computer just shuts down. And I'm thinking, boy, that doesn't sound like it's a software no. glitch. And right. It's something with a hard drive. So mm-hmm. how do you guys see it? Uh, I'd have to say that there's got to be uh, uh, a hardware issue of some kind, uh, probably um, something that could be done. And um, I could be wrong on this, maybe considering uh, upgrading the BIOS. Okay. Uh, I think that could be done uh, to see okay. if that corrects the issue. Also, um, depending on uh, the image that was loaded onto the DVD or the flash drive, when you download an image, I can't stress enough to run an MD5 stuff. Now, in, yes. in Windows, you're going to need to actually download an application uh, that will let you check an MD5 sum. And anytime you download an ISO image for a Linux distribution underneath it or somewhere next to it, you're going to see this string of numbers. It's going to say MD5 sum, and you're going to have this string of numbers. And then you use this Windows application. After you downloaded that ISO image, you run the MD5 sum, and those numbers should match. If they don't match, then you have a yes. corrupt image. And yes. this very well could be the also be the same issue that uh, this person is experiencing. They probably just have a shoddy internet connection and just got a bad download. But if the MD5 sums do match, then another troubleshooting technique would... And as a last resort, I would say try updating the BIOS. Most uh, PC manufacturers uh, have a simple tool that will allow you to upgrade your BIOS to the latest and greatest and that sort of thing and do it in a non-destructive manner. Uh, make sure that you follow the instructions that come with that device because because if you're if you lose power if you're not completely plugged in that sort of thing while uh, while you're um, flashing while you're actually flashing your BIOS you can actually brick your system and that's something you really don't yes, want to do. Yes, absolutely. One other one other point that I, I probably should bring up here because I had a very similar situation not that long ago uh, with with uh, with a friend's uh, laptop and he had a Sony VAIO and uh, or however you say that and 
um, and one of the he actually had a setting in the BIOS which prevented uh, booting from external devices. So I actually set up the boot priority uh, to boot from the USB or from the CD-ROM. I think it was the USB, and um, and so and uh, we rebooted the system, and it would just keep rebooting, uh, like into you know whatever was on the hard drive, completely ignoring the the settings that we'd set up in the BIOS. It wasn't until after that that we actually looked under the security tab of the BIOS and found that there was a setting there to prevent uh, booting external devices, and that was enabled by default. So I'm not sure whether there might be uh, an issue there. Oh, it could be just uh, some kind of a setting in that gentleman's, uh, I mean, like in the BIOS. Uh, that's a possibility, sure. Yeah, there are um, a lot of possibilities. It's impossible to tell, you know, at the moment what exactly is going to be a lot. Yeah, it's, I mean, from the email I was, you know, we sent, it's, it's, it sounded like he was really trying to, to, to try and install Zorn as a dual boot, but he, you know, he says, I wanted to try it first to make sure that it works, which I completely understand. And I'm not sure if on the Zorn website it gives clear enough instructions how to do it. I know on the Ubuntu website they did a terrific job to make it shall I say dummies proof, you know, for some you know, for some Windows users on how to try Ubuntu and maybe Zorn maybe can copy some of the wording there. But um yeah, I for myself I I downloaded the latest Zorn, what is it, five point something, five point two. I installed it both from the uh, Uniboon or a disk. I didn't have any issues, but I did have to go into the BIOS. So again, it could be the MD five, a corrupt file. It could be uh you may need an updated BIOS, but be careful with that, or a simple set setting in the BIOS that perhaps that gentleman is missing. And it's happened to me too. I mean, maybe I might, might just miss something. But it should work. I mean, Zorn is a good operating system for new users. It is stable. So a- anyway, if, if this person is listening, try that. If it doesn't work, please let me know. And we will maybe suggest uh, something else. Okay. Gentlemen, we have another, I would say, 10 minutes. Uh, would you like to spend some time closing it out on what's happening in the future, like in our respective uh, channels? And then we will close out the evening. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm going to have to run because my wife is going to be home with groceries here in about a minute. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you for coming but, on. We do appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Yes, yeah. but go ahead. But yeah. uh, in terms of the future, um, I don't know if, if I had mentioned it before or not. I am actually going to be making some videos over on uh, the YouTube.com slash XDA developers channel. Uh, talking just weekly recaps of what's going on over on the website. And, okay. um, of course, my, my channel will be uh, sort of doing a reboot in the next month, hopefully. Uh, I'm in the process of moving from one house to another, and it's just really chaotic. So uh, right. every right. bit of time well, yeah. I have is really pressed. Moving is for stable. Totally agree. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. I do appreciate the opportunity, and I just heard the garage door open. So have a great okay. night, guys. Good night. Take care, my friend. Yep. Good night. Bye. Uh, okay. Pincast, what can you uh, update us on? Okay, yeah, I've been busy, guys, and to all of my subscribers or watchers right now, sorry, guys, I'm really, I've just been busy with stuff, so I haven't been able to uh, do videos, and I really am going to try to upload one. Um, uh, what was I going to say here? Um, as I said, uh, desk, desktop was a machine I was doing all my work on, and at the moment, that's not usable, so all I have is my laptop. Um, trying to get a distro on this that works, and it doesn't have the spec to, like my desktop, so it needs to be a bit lightweight, so I'm finding a distro for this machine, and once I do, I'll do some uh, videos on that, and um, I have promised Gen 2 videos, so I'll be doing Gen 2 videos as well, and I'll, and the Slack spins will continue, so uh, stay tuned for those. I like doing the Slack spin, and I'll just pass the mic to somebody else. IG. Yeah, well, uh, I'm definitely, uh, I'm actually looking to review uh, the XBMC um, Media Center at some stage, because there was a release that came out uh, at least a month ago um, from uh, from XBMC, and they are a fantastic multimedia uh, center that you can use on your TV or on your laptop, whatever. So that'll be coming up and uh, obviously we have the Ubuntu 12.04 review and I'm also going to try something different in that I'm actually going to do a written review of Ubuntu 12.04 over on my blog as well. So uh, we're putting some effort into that because uh, I think people do really need to see uh, the, the ins and outs of, of Ubuntu 12.04 as it is a long-term support release and I think, um, you know, if we can do our part to, to, you know, spread the word about it, then, uh, you know, the more the merrier. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Ubuntu 12.04. Spatry, did, did you say Thursday is the official release date? I believe so, yes. Wonderful. And I love it yeah. that we're all we're all already running it. Yep. Yeah, like I said, I installed it e- even on my own uh, phony Vista laptop. At, you know, at the time I installed I mean, I did have to boost RAM from 5, 12 to 2 gigabytes in it. But, yeah, I mean, Ubuntu 12.04 has impressed this Windows 7 user immensely. Now, it is an old laptop with a rather outdated process. 
system. So it's not as zippy as I would like it to be, but that's not Ubuntu's fault at all. But for me, since Alpha 2 and now, the core system has been stable, not necessarily all the software because of the all the updates day in and day out, but I'm impressed. And I think Ubuntu 12.04 might be, time will tell, might be a viable replacement for your Windows system. Spatry, what do you have coming up in your channel? Well, um, Sunday night news and nonsense. <laughs> I love it. I love it. IG, one of these nights you have to jump on. So he can torture you instead of me. And Pink Hats, uh, the, the more buffers I can get, the better for me. Thank you. Hey, well, the, the thing buffers? is, well, Sorry, to- Total OS just has this knack for bringing it out of me. I mean, he picks out these, he picks out these news articles, and I mean, every one of these articles is just screaming funny, you know, uh, some way, <laughs> shape, fashion, or form, you know, uh, I can I can find something funny to say about it, but, you know, that's yeah. why it's news and nonsense, the Sinner Report. Let's give now, Pink Cast but, a quick <laughs> example, Spatry. Okay, here we go, Spat. I mean, Pink, here's an example. I didn't know what, I didn't know what you meant by buffers. <laughs> oh, a, a buffer? A buffer, you be my buffer, you and I be like my shield. You you defend me against Spatry when he goes <laughs> Oh, through. okay. When he, buffer, uh, okay. a shield, a virus shield, a buffer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a halo shield, you know. But well, you anyway, I meant to what? So to, to what's battery? To his jokes, okay. yeah. But let me give you an example. Uh, Fedora 17 is going to be called, are you ready? Beefy Miracle. <laughs> Boy, it sounds like something that you have after a bad meal. Yeah, and the thing is, I made this comment something to the effect of the hot dog, because they're going to use a hot dog for the. Uh, 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 I don't want to cut this out. So. <laughs> uh, let's not go there again. So, yeah, yeah, let, let's not go there. But it had a picture of a hot dog and the relish on one of the websites. And my, yeah. <laughs> my, my thought was, okay, now the board of directors, I'm assuming, are in a locked room thinking about the next name. And my joke was, now, did this name come up before or after taking Viagra? Okay. And then, of course, Spatchy did his thing. It was a little bit across the line. Uh, one of these days, maybe I'll let you guys list it in private, but that's as far as we're going to go. Uh, by the way, speaking of names, the next Ubuntu is coming out, and it's it's not what I thought. And it's not what either of us thought. Spatry, do you know what, really? it's, what it's called? What? IG, do you know what it's called? Quintessential Q-tip? No. Yeah, unfortunately not, no. Quagmire Oh, I know. Wait, I know the next. It's Precise Tangle. No, no, I mean, I'm sorry. The next one after Precise, 1210. Oh, 1210, I have no idea. Quantum? Quetzal Quetzal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying. That's in my first. Uh, what the bleep is the quant? It's, it sounds like a taco. Quantum Quetzal. Oh, Quantal. Oh Quantal. Quantal. Not quantum. Quantal. Qu- I imagine Wikipedia's Qu- hits for Quetzal would have just gone up over the Quetzal, last. Quetzal, I believe, like, is a bird, hours. an exotic bird, and Quantal means I have no idea. But that's uh, uh, we were both wrong, Spatry. Hey, what this? What version is? Uh, I can't pronounce it. It's it's. I would have preferred Spatry's. It's 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 quantum. No, what was it? Quintessential Q-tip. <laughs> 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 yeah, you see, you just, you, you know, stick it in your ear and squeeze the juice out of it. That yeah, would be right. a miracle. <laughs> That's, yeah, so there you go. That's what we talked about last night on the Center Report, the Sunday Night News and Nonsense. And it differs from the usual <laughs> Toscast, Linux A team, and now the PC A team in that it's it's meant to be, it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Originally, it was called a TTTV, a Toss Today Tech Brief. It was meant to be a formal, short, purely practical pragmatic, informational discussion on all things related to tech. Like 15 minutes. Well, you know, once me and Spatry got into a chemical role, I figure, screw the news, let's let's do the joke. So it's been changed <laughs> to the Sunday night news and, and nonsense, nonsense report. Sinner, for short, and you can guess who's the sinner and who's the victim. Yeah, it's uh, like it's like little it's like little devil on one shoulder and little angel on the yeah, other shoulder. Yeah. You know? it, guess, it, it, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, let me guess the uh, victim's <laughs> person seeing uh, Spatry teeth. <laughs> Fortunately, you can't see. So, but that's what's going on. That'll be, you know what, Spatry? Maybe we should try to record these before if we can so I can <laughs> upload them Sunday so people can catch it Sunday night. I don't know. It's just a thought, but if we have time. But 
Okay. But that's what's going on. Yeah, that's the center. And, of course, IG and Pinkcast and Twill are definitely welcome. The only thing is if we get a lot more people, then the show will, you know, extend and drag on. I don't want that. It's meant to be really 15, 20 minutes tops. Of course, by the time we all stop telling the jokes, it's like an hour later. But uh, <laughs> uh, but that's that the only we can device. speed it all up and make us make everybody sound like chipmunks. That might <laughs> So instead exactly. of IG doing his slow motion <laughs> today on Total Today <laughs> <Bye. laughs> Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, no! That anyway, sounded that's that's, that's yeah. sound, that sounded like somebody had uh, something in a vice. <laughs> Battery, <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Down, boy, down. Oof. I hear you still with us. Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> okay. If, if if you want to chime in with a voice thing that you do, please be my guest. Can you do something else with your <laughs> voice to make me happy? Oh man, alive! That sounds weird. Um. Uh. Yeah. Well, I don't know. What else have we got to talk about, really? We're running out of time. We only have four minutes left. There you go. That was good. That that was good. That sounds very TV announcer-like. Thank you. Actually, that sounds that sounds about right. Time is almost up. It's been about an hour. So, uh, gentlemen, this was fun as usual. I hope uh, it was informative. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and, uh, I, I, yeah. I, think, I think we got a few useful tidbits of information. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, Pinkass, closing comments, real quick. Um, since uh, Spectre brought up uh, hot dog and fedora, have you gone to fedora.org and seen that, t- uh, that dog in the hot dog bun? <laughs> <laughs> Battery, a dog, shut up. Uh, a dog <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I think I think Fedora must have like a development team that that their main job is to is to come up with just ways to make Fedora the most unrespected Linux distribution out there. <laughs> I, I literally think that's what it is. We definitely well, butchered it last night. Yeah, well, go ahead. <laughs> so, well, on the uh, of the website, as always, we are not affiliated with Red Hat or the Fedora Project or people who like to wear hats while using Linux or any other entity. And has the dog a picture above it. I mean, I'd say I. I have, I have no problem with unique names, but Beefy Miracle. <laughs> I don't know what else to say on that. IG, do you want to close out the show? Yeah, well, I can try to. I mean, this show could go on forever, really. But no, thank you, everybody, once again, for tuning in. And we really appreciate you coming back and listening to these shows. The inaugural episode of the PCA team, hopefully, we'll try and give you a, a bit of a balanced approach between uh, between the Windows, Linux, and possibly OS X worlds. And uh, so, yeah, thank you, everybody, once again. And uh, from all our respective channels, definitely uh, check us out if you haven't already. And I'm sure most of you already have. Also, we will be trying to provide some, uh, some MP3 links that you can download if you want to be uh, listening to this uh, when you're away from your internet connection, which uh, would show a lot of dedication on your part and would show um, that we are mildly entertaining on our part. So thank you once again, and I, and with that, I shall peace out and uh, and enjoy the rest of my day, and the rest of you can uh, can enjoy, I, I imagine, going to bed at some stage. Thank you. Uh, this was fun, and I just had a thought for Spatry's new channel. Spatry's, Spatry's Cup of Imbalance. Hmm. <laughs> in terms of getting... In, in in terms of what uh, uh, Infinitely Galactic was saying, I'll yeah. sleep when I'm dead. How about a nice big cup of Miracle? <laughs> Folks, thank you for listening. <laughs> we will catch you, as always, in your Beefy Miracle future. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye.